First question is from Draghi12. Is it okay to do isometrics on trigger session days or does it mess with recovery too much? Oh. Oh, that's great to do on trigger ah, sessions. I like days. this question. Yeah. yeah, trigger sessions are designed just to maintain. Think of it that way, right? You're trying to maintain the muscle building signal that you sent the day before. So you're not trying to create damage. You're not trying to like hammer your body. You're trying to facilitate recovery, blood <laughs> flow, get a little bit of a pump. And then you want to also keep that muscle building signal that you sent because it starts to fall pretty quickly, about 24, 48 hours. And the trigger sessions kind of maintain it higher than normal. Can can isometrics do that? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I love isometrics uh, for, for that. I love questions like this. I mean, this uh, the idea always was that the podcast would complement these programs. We always knew that we would never be able to make a program for the masses that everybody should follow and is perfect for their body for where they're at. So there was so much, there's so much more to it. There's so many, many more variables. There's so many different ways that you can do this. And so, but we wanted to give these really solid blueprints based on really good science and foundation in our experience, and then use this platform to be able to guide people to know how to mold it more for them. And like, we talk about the benefits of isometrics all the time. We don't actually have it programmed in some of the, uh, like anabolic isn't got isometrics mm -hmm. programmed in it, mm -hmm. but what a great thing to add to your trigger days. I mean, your trigger sessions are short little 10 minute bouts anyways. You know, you do one or two exercises of isometrics included in there. Awesome. Yeah, I've always been passionate in this direction. This is why, you know, decided we all decided to kind of introduce it in MAPS Performance uh, as we were programming it just to show, you know, the value of it. And it's another valuable technique that was like a long lost art. Yes. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that, too, you can really manage your intensity and manage the amount of damage you get uh, very effectively, very easily, because it's one of the only ones where you could literally just internally let off. Uh, intensity and it's not uh, dictated by uh, you know the movement quite as much and so too it can also expose you know weak links in the chain where you could really like hone in on those and spend more time you know in the recruitment process which then builds up your overall uh, performance yeah it's um, there's different ways to do isometrics too there's different intensities right so I could do isometrics with just my body in fact uh, in the 70s Bodybuilders would often promote posing in between sets or posing on off days. That's Arnold, still popular. It, it is, right? And Arnold used to do this uh, pre-contest. He, he did no cardio, did anything like that. And he said posing sharpened his body. Really what he was doing was, that's what posing is, right? It's isometric uh, type training. And you're right. It is a forgotten art. It used to be a staple in strongman, in strongman training. I'm talking about at the turn of the century, like, you know, early 1900s, all the way up until the 1940s, isometrics was a staple part of training. And let me tell you, these guys, and this is before supplements were popular, let alone anabolic steroids, some of the feats of strength that they did today would blow people away. Just incredible. I know Eugene Sandow, I think, did a bent press, one arm with like 300 pounds, and this was mm -hmm. in front of crowds, so he didn't just report it. This was like a legit thing, and they weighed it and tested it. Pretty insane. So there's lots of value, but there's different ways to do it. You can pose or you could push against an immovable object, which is higher intensity and is going to cause more, you know, quote unquote damage, right? So I could flex my quads and squeeze my glutes. And that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be getting underneath the bar and, and push the bar up against safeties. And I'm not going to lift the cage. Let's say it's all like, it's too heavy for, to, for me to even move, mm -hmm. but I push against it anyway and I don't move. Or I get into a push up position maybe put resistance on my back or a bar, push up against you know the safeties again. It's not moving, but I'm pushing against an immovable object. That's a much higher intensity version of isometrics. Also has value, but will cause a little bit more damage. A very simple way to look at this. We've already made the case for why a practicing a movement is so valuable for mm -hmm. like getting good at the exercise, getting the most out of it. All you're really doing with isometrics is practicing flexing a muscle yeah, mm -hmm. in a particular hey. range of motion. That's right. You're, you're, just, you're, you're practicing connecting to it, getting really good at connecting to a specific muscle. And there's tremendous value in practicing that. I mean, that's one of the things that I remember as a trainer, like, wow, 
how many clients just can't even flex a muscle. Yeah. If you can't stand and and I can't say, hey, flex your back or your lats or flex your shoulders or flex your tricep, your bicep, and you struggle to connect to one of those muscles, you are not going to get the most right. out of your out of the training when it, when, you're, when you're training those muscles. I think too, a lot of people don't even associate like uh, in our Prime Pro program, for example, with kin stretch and that whole uh, methodology is isometrically based. So it's yeah. really about like getting into end range positions. So uh, a lot of times when we're going through exercises, we're trying to kind of focus on the peak of where we squeeze. Uh, it, whereas, you know, spending time where you're in the end range of that movement has tremendous value as well, because now I can increase the amount of muscles that I can recruit, uh, you know, in the end range, which then kind of you bring that back into that same type of, of uh, exercise. Now you, you have more support, more strength, uh, within the entire range of motion, not just the peak. Isn't there, so there's some research that's around this. I believe, uh, I think Ben Pakulski is notorious for talking about this. Um, when somebody has a, a, an underdeveloped muscle that they actually do train and they work out and they can't seem to develop it. I, I, he attributes a large percentage of that to the uh, the ability to connect to the muscle mm -hmm. in the in range in, 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 the, in the squeeze position. Yeah, is that? Yeah, it's hard. And I mean, we saw this as trainers. Like, if I wanted someone to connect to their glutes, I would have them focus on the squeeze position first. The most that would help them connect to the glutes. So he, I don't know if there's any studies to support it. No, I believe there is. I remember he. I think he. I really? remember him referencing okay. that to where he pulled from that, and I he like almost. That's it. Like if someone yeah. comes to you and says, "Oh, you train all your body evenly, yeah. but your calves won't come up, or your, mm. you know, your yeah, shoulders." It's usually won't. a poor connection. That yeah, that's he he attributes on. it to that. Is yeah. that you just got a poor connection? So, by the way, uh, I, I forgot about this a long time ago, and I want to tell you, Justin, because I think you think this is super cool. I saw somebody do a home gym setup for isometric training. What they did was is they they in, put two bolts in the concrete, mm -hmm. you know, two loops. And then they would have chains mm -hmm. that they would attach to the bar. And then you could just attach the chains on whatever link on it. So I could get underneath the bar mm -hmm. at the bottom. And it's it's literally anchored into the cement and the concrete. And then do a squat, but I'm obviously in a position. Or do it at a higher position or a higher position. Right. You could do it with curls. You could do it with overhead press even. Yes. I've, yeah, I've seen something very similar I think that would be rad that. to have, something like, have yeah. something like that in here. Our, totally. uh, our friend uh, Eugene Tao did a, a series when COVID first hit. And I actually, all he used was like a beach towel. Oh yeah, that's old school. Bodybuilders yeah. should do he that. He just used yeah. a, a beach towel and did like this whole little workout of all isometrics with it for the entire body. I thought that was really yeah, cool. Really so smart. yeah, awesome content.